Headlines about electric vehicle fires are becoming more common worldwide. His car was towed to a shop where it then burst into flames. And with the number of EVs only increasing on Australia's roads, the Firefighters Union is concerned. There's no greater likelihood of an electric vehicle fire than a combustion engine car fire. But when they happen, the risks are huge. The biggest cause of such fires is so-called thermal runaway from the batteries. And that is where that heat build up and the current flowing in the cells causes the ones adjacent to it to start um, going into a chain reaction. Newer models do have safeguards built in, but the firefighters union says a major concern is the location of charging stations, often in garages and underground or multi-storey car parks. And when it comes to putting out a blaze, the union says a typical combustion engine car fire takes between 1,100 and 1,400 litres of water or foam to fully extinguish. While a fire in an electric vehicle, which involves the batteries burning at a much higher temperature, can take up to 30,000 litres of water to put out completely. So then there's the question of where do you get the water? And what do you do with that water once it's contaminated? And how do you get that water into something like a multi-storey car park? We just take tanker appliances rather than pumpers um, to provide us with the larger volume of water that we need. There's also an emerging risk to first responders. Even with the very best protective clothing and firefighters being covered from head to toe, they run the risk of cobalt poisoning. That can be career ending. The ACT government and Fire and Rescue have just spent millions of dollars upgrading to the latest standard of uh, personal protective equipment, which includes a vapour barrier. Small steps towards future proofing are already being taken. Being rated not to only do uh, combustible fuels and or combustible solids and liquids, but this has been designed to put out lithium battery fire. Yes, we're getting on with it but I would say that it's nowhere near comprehensive enough. Trying to prepare for and prevent the worst case scenario. Emma Thompson, ABC News, Canberra.